India's changing role in a changing world has been a major theme of the evolution of India during the first half century of our independence. And few living public figures in India have had more to do with the shaping of this theme than Mr. Aika Gujral. So welcome to you, Mr. Gujral, here Thank this you. evening. Mr. Gujral, you are here this evening, and we are grateful that you have found the time to be with us for a conversation on this theme of the role of changing India in a changing world with El Commodore Jasjit Singh, retired, he, who is the director of the Indian Institute of Defense Studies and Analysis, Mr. K.K. Bhargava, former Secretary General of SARC, and therefore closely connected with the evolution of this theme in the South Asian context, and Sanjay Bharu, a journalist who specializes in India's foreign economic relations, and which have now acquired a major dimension in the conduct of India's external relations. And Jasjit, since you have probably the broadest overview of defense and foreign policies, may I invite you to initiate the conversation. Thank you, Pran. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, after 50 years of India's independence, uh, it appears that our foreign policy, and this is much more visible, I should say, in the 1990s, that it seems to be seeking the same uh, type of broad engagement in Asia. Uh, as much as Nehru did, I thought at that time, uh, 50 years ago, uh, would you agree with that and what, what are your views on this? Well, yes and no. <coughs> this, uh, naturally, we are sitting in Asia and also Asia is a major part of the world population-wise particularly, and historically also, and civilizationally also, we are in this region. So naturally, Nehru was not wrong when he focused on Asia, and I think that has been a sustained approach of Indian foreign policy. But at the same time, I think uh, yeah, even in Nehru's time, and I think onwards, we have also sustained our interest in the rest of the world. For instance, there is a major qualitative shift in our relations with our USA friends, particularly in last one year. I will take time to develop that point, but you know it, that I, since my meeting yes. with President Clinton, there is a qualitative change. There is a qualitative change in our relations with Europe. Look at this week alone, the number of presidents and the prime ministers have come here with the large business delegations. In next two or three days, I am expecting the president of France to come with a hundred businessmen with him on his toe. Last week I had the president of uh, Italy here with the same a Greece, same situation. And I, I could go on backward counting. The major shift is that economy and economic relations have become a central point of Indian foreign policy. And that is also not only unique thing with us, every country in the world is doing so. We continue to have good relations and build on our neighborhood because that has to be central point of Indian foreign policy. At the same time, we must safeguard our economic relations in a way and build them in a way that an ordinary Indian gets benefit from that. You see, sir, I, I agree with that. But when I said Asia, it's basically Asia within the larger global picture. Uh, but if we look ahead also, it's fairly clear that some of the major whatever we call them, centers of power and capability are, are going to be Asian. I, you know, my view that the 21st century is an Asian century, not a Pacific century. It may be Pacific otherwise, we hope. <laughs> Japan, China, Russia, the United States is much more today in the post-Vietnam period, much more an Asian power than what it was at any time before, perhaps in the Second World War, but in more recent times. But within that framework, uh, one of that relationship that is likely to be the most important is going to be the Chinese uh, relationship, both between China and the United States and China and India, China and Japan too. Uh, I think we've had this great window of opportunity uh, starting from the late 80s, but taken much more forward in the 1990s and more recently, uh, as you remember, when the Chinese president came to India. How do we see that India-China relations then moving ahead 
Uh, is the pace satisfactory? Uh, what is it that we need to be thinking I about? I accept your uh, feeling, Jesse, that India-China relationships are going to acquire a great deal of importance. When we particularly remember the number of people that live here, the number yes, of sir. people that live in China, and the demands of economy in both the countries. I accept that. But we have history also. So undoing of a history takes time. It has taken some time since 1962. But I think in these uh, three decades or more, we have positively moved in a direction. As you have rightly mentioned, President Jiang's visit here was very symbolic of that. I wish we moved more fast. Uh, but the choice is not ours. That's it depends upon several things. But I agree, but look at that. In addition to what you have said, there are several other important powers in, China, in Asia also. Transformation of our relations with ASEAN. Yes. We are full dialogue partners. We are a sort of participant in the ASEAN regional forum. Look at another dimension, our relations with Korea, our relations with Japan itself. And of course, if we count Russia as a part of Asia also, as we may have to, the quality of relationships that we have with Russia, Central Asia, I need not mention. We have very good relations with them. Yes. Again, in all these things that I am mentioning, the central point remains South Asia. Because in the last <coughs> 50 years of our foreign policies, we were very often frustrated that we could not transform our relations with our South Asian neighbors. I think if, if I may, in all humility, claim some credit, we have been able to transform our relationships with our Asian, our South Asian friends absolutely radically. And today we'll be returning to uh, South Asia, Mr. Prime Minister, in a little while when Mr. Bhargava uh, takes over yes. addressing you. Yes. Uh, but so let me yes. go back to yes. uh, what you mentioned, sir, and also the, the question of the United States and India. We've seen the raising of the both the not only the profile of the India-US relationship, but there's a very clear signs uh, from that end, and I think from this end too, that we need to strengthen that relationship, build on that in a variety of ways, not merely on the economic side, but raise it as somebody talked of in terms of strategic policy, dialogue, partnership. And I, and, and, and I think that's going to be an extremely important one, but in that there are still, of course, many areas on which both sides have yet to get down to what some people in America would call the roadblocks. But how do you see this relationship growing? Of course, the president's visit had to be postponed, but I think this year... Jasjeet, this year I met uh, the president in October, I think. Yes, sir, in September. There were many cynics who thought I was doing a mistake. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I have still to discover very few people who thought I was doing the right thing. <laughs> because we got stuck on small things, whether I should advance my visit by a few days or not, and a great deal of issue with national dignity is involved. Look at the hurdles that we have crossed. CTBT was a major hurdle. We did not give in. Yes. We stood as a nation with dignity. Everybody had to accept our stand. Oh, I think when I say everybody had to stand, I do not mean to say this, they think that we are doing the right thing. They will never think so. Hmm. But we have made it clear that whether America or Europe or anybody who has to deal with us has to deal with us on our terms also. Secretary of State Americans, after how many years she, did she visit yeah. India? 18 years? Yes. Maybe more? Most. How many ministers of America have come to India in the last three months? Why are they doing it? Not because uh, it is a very nice winter here and the <laughs> flowers bloom in this season and, uh, and wow. unfortunately we didn't have very pleasant winter either. <laughs> Why are they coming? Why is it the elections are now in next few days and I do not have any three days when I do not have a visitor at my hand from mm. major European mm. powers. Why is it happening? Primarily because we have succeeded in sort of expanding our concept of neighborhood, number one. We have succeeded in conveying the message that India is a place and a country worth dealing with. So therefore, when I look at this, I look at Africa, for instance, I went to Africa three times. Why did I do it? It is not pleasant for me to travel all the time. Mm. Uh, I mean, I don't, I'm not very curious uh, 
traveler either nor a curious uh, tourist. We have our dishes with the entire continent of Africa. It's totally transformed. The Indian Ocean Rim mm -hmm. Association, a new thing in India's initiative. A new thing which we have taken birth is relationship with Bangkok, Bangladesh, India. Yeah. Totally new. And uh, Myanmar. Totally new thing. You see, main point is that if I may say so, we have succeeded in expanding the concept of Indian interests, both area-wise and also subject-wise. We have also succeeded in conveying to the world that India deals with the world on its own terms. India does not give in, and I mentioned CTBT yes. as a test yes. point. Yes. We were punished also for mm. that. Mm. We were denied our due seat in the sure. Security Council, but such are the moments when one has to stand up. Is the punishment over, Mr. Prime Minister, yet, or is it continuing? Well, you see, pressures will continue all the yeah, time. Right. But the main point is that India must understand, and that is that you never win a place by giving in on yeah. the national interest. Yeah. You win a place and esteem and respect of others, as in personal life, when you stand with dignity and you know what your interests are. I think India has been able to spell out its interests in a great deal of clarity. And I think that is where we have succeeded. And we are succeeding. And I am certain that the future that is opening up for us is very promising. We must uh, return, Jasdeep, to this uh, question of uh, the CTBT and whatever fallout and whatever lies ahead, as it were, uh, in a while. But uh, the Prime Minister has referred Mr. Bhargava to this new dimension of SARC, the spilling beyond the traditional defined, traditionally defined borders of SARC into a Southeast Asian relationship as well as into this Indian Ocean, quadra the Indian, yeah. Indian Ocean thing, the, the development quadrangle. You as a student of South Asian affairs, SARC affairs, how do you see this development and the development of SARC itself? Uh, well, uh, uh, the Prime Minister's contribution in this field has really been unique, if I may say so. And uh, we now had the trilateral summit concluded recently in uh, Dhaka, Mr. Prime Minister. And uh, I am sure that uh, we can now look forward to vastly increased economic and trade cooperation in the region, which will act as engine for growth for all our countries and thereby increase economic wealth of the region as a whole. I make the point that economic wealth is very important, Mr. Prime Minister, because in the changing world which we refer to, there is the interaction between the power game and economic wealth. And so far, South Asia as a region and India as a core country seems to be missing out. With the policies which we have followed, we can look forward to it. So we would really like to request you to share with us uh, your assessment after the Dhaka summit. Can we look forward to a promising era in the field of economic cooperation? And do you think that the political clout of South Asia and of India will increase? Mr. Bhargav, let me begin in a different context slightly. When I talk of our relations with South Asia, I mentioned a while ago and I will only repeat in a word, and that is that relationships with our neighbours have been transformed radically. How? India presented for the first time a new approach and the word used non-reciprocity. I think an Indian foreign policy has never done it in the past. It has been assigned the name of Gujarat doctrine. Yes, correct. But issue was that I spelt out and India spelt out basically that it is a different India that is dealing with the neighbours. We showed a great deal of self-confidence in our economy, in our strength, in our capacity to deal with our neighbours which are smaller, which are, whose economy is lesser than ours, whose size is much smaller than ours, as not as a bully or a big brother, but as a country which has capacity to accommodate. And that has transformed the relationships. You, I could give you example after example and it's known. Bangladesh, for 30 years we were lurking in a darkness. And today, matter of three months, four months, new new relationships. Sri Lanka, 
even the JN Commission report has not upset them. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Because they look at and then as the president of Sri Lanka said, we don't want to go into the past. They are very, we are very happy with the present. Our relation with Nepal, India exhibiting this much amount of self-confidence that it does not mind giving them transit to, to Bangladesh. And result, Mahakali Treaty. Well, Mr. Well, Prime Minister, if I may say so, the, the great initiative you took at the Mali summit, yes. this forward-looking strategic dialogue, a vision for South Asia 220 yes. and the targets which must be achieved by 2010, I think this again is a very signal contribution and it sends, in my view, a very positive signal to the outside world. And I'm not surprised that we have now Beamstack and the Indian Ocean Rim countries, these um, uh, regional arrangements also coming up. But Mr. Prime Minister, one thing which worries many of us is the attitude of some of the countries of SARC to these kind of arrangements. We have talked of sub-regional cooperation including Bangladesh, Bhutan, Nepal and India. You talked of Beamstack, Bangladesh, India, Myanmar, Sri Lanka and Thailand. And then there is the Indian Ocean Rim countries. How do you think uh, we can remove their apprehensions? Do you I think they have come about I'll tell understanding you, it? Uh, you have rightly asked the question and I should have replied your first question that gets linked with this. The Dhaka summit this week, that I went there, for one day we met on the 14th, no, 15th in Dhaka itself. Three of us. For the first time, three powers, including Pakistan, meet and they don't talk about Kashmir. Normal, you get stuck in that. We talked about SEFTA. I projected the idea of the South Asian community. Now we are uh, offering the vision of not only SEFTA, SEFTA going into SEFTA, but beyond SEFTA also. That like European community, South Asians must have a community interest and must spell out what it is. Received, very well received. This fact that we have a business summit, I think it is not an uh, ordinary thing that the, a large number of leading businessmen industries from all the three countries assemble. And then they come to stage how to increase your business. India also has offered in this Dhaka, I, you are asking me a question, how do we do it? India, for instance, said for least developing countries in the region, and that means Nepal, that means Bangladesh, that means uh, Bhutan, that means um, uh, Maldives, four. I am willing to go towards zero tariff, tariff quickly. I am willing to remove all non-tariff barriers straight away. This transformation is because of the self-confidence of India and India's economy. In India's economy, which we always call as big, big now, it is a big market, it should not be looked only in terms of transactions. Market is not only transaction place. Market also has an orientation which I call foreign policy. And once we look at the country as foreign policy and how to take advantage of that, many others have done it in the past. But I am glad we have learned quickly and we are using it in our own region. That is how, that is how we are doing it. Why does it happen that uh, every country of this region feels more delighted in, you have been Secretary General of the SARC. Every time the summit was held in the past, well, India got isolated, all got together. Doesn't happen anymore, my dear. If, if somebody, this is, this is a sea world, this is a sea change. This is, India is looked at as a country is friendly, is a warm, willing to deal and unavoidable identity in this region. This is the achievement. This is now telling us in our, for instance, I was talking to the Bangladesh now on this summit. And they have some gas, they are exploding more, they are likely to be gas surplus. They asked me, what do we do? I said, for God's sake, don't sell us a gas. You sell us a product. Invite investment, value added. It is in your interest. You make fertilizer, for instance, and utilize Indian market. You make petrochemicals, utilize Indian market. Investment now, one thing has become very clear to all other uh, countries around India that 
massive foreign investment will come only if Indian market is open. And I am making it available. For instance, Sri Lanka, we have recently happened, has surplus rubber. Up till now, they were selling rubber. When I met the president last time, I said, why do you sell rubber? Sell tires to us. We are a huge market for tires. The one giant enterprise has been set up. Nepal, similar things. You see, main point basically you must understand is that your, your like personal life, your friends trust you when they know that you look after their interest also. And you are not there to exploit in the, in the colonial sense of the word. I think what, uh, if I may claim slight personal credit for this, I think what I have read my own history very carefully. And I have read, I have learned that why were we apprehensive in the past of the outsiders. And then place myself in that situation. Why should my neighbors be apprehensive of me? Remove the barrier. Very and true. suddenly you find the flood of love and affection and friendship and cooperation. Sanjay, the Prime Minister has thrown the ball clearly in your field of how economic affairs and economic relationships affect foreign policy. What is your view on that? Well, I, mean, I think it's extremely uh, important to emphasize the centrality of economics in foreign policy, especially in the post-Cold War world. And I think your contribution has also been to extend the Gujral doctrine to the area of economic relations. I think if Dhaka summit was in that sense a turning point for our foreign policy or economic foreign policy in the region, and, and, and I think that's a very important step you have taken in getting rid of this notion of reciprocity. And, and, and I'm very happy to hear that you say you want to eliminate non-tariff barriers and, and reduce tariff uh, with respect to our neighbors. Um, but I think th there are two questions that I have for you. One is there seems to be an apprehension at home about uh, whether we are going too fast in opening up our economy to the world. And on the other hand, there is a feeling abroad, especially in the developed industrial countries, that we are not doing enough. Uh, to deal with them on the economic plane? Well, let me deal with the, the, the first apprehension that I am doing too much. I think that is the mindset. So, you know, when you have lived in a hole and you are suddenly exposed to light, sometimes eyes dazzle. <laughs> <laughs> it is very difficult for people to believe that the relationship can be transformed like this. Mm. We have been too much used to reciprocity, which has been too much used to uh, quid pro quo. So therefore, if somebody says no differently, in the belief, in the, you remember, I have seen this in the last few years that I have been projecting this, not one year, I have not, for two years I have been projecting right. this policy. First cynicism, mm. then apprehension, mm. no acceptance. Yeah. So this is, this is taking three stages to come to this stage. This acceptance basically means that India's own concept has undergone a change. Hasn't India's in internal economy undergone a change? We were stuck for years and years with one ambassador car. <laughs> Why is it happening? I, I, I was telling some friends the other day, I said, uh, before partition, the whole of British India together used to import 60,000 bicycles. And Delhi, I saw the other day, left in governor saying that Delhi alone has got 20 lakhs of bicycles. Mm. Well, I am not going to talk about the dimensions of India's achievements. If you have achieved all this, it should get expression in the foreign policy and economic policy and amount of self-confidence. I think why India's acceptability has increased both in neighborhood and abroad is the exhibition and manifestation of this self-confidence. We can deal with people at our own terms and with the firmness that we need. And by firmness, I don't mean aggressiveness, nor do I mean trying to bully people. But, but, but developed countries seem to think that we are not doing enough. I mean, there's no, I come to that. Yeah. The, those who are thinking we are not doing enough, they like, like, like to treat us on the textbook basis. You know, three days back, uh, Sanjay, I was in Madras four days. There was an international seminar. And they, we were talking about the tigers in difficulties, Indian, Indonesian rupee swirling into 10,000 rupees per dollar. My God, what happens? Hong Kong, Malaysia, all these are difficulty. Touch wood, I keep my fingers crossed. We have shock absorbed. And I told them anecdotally, I said, look, uh, you always cite us the instance of tigers. Tigers leap high 
but come down quickly <laughs> we are like an elephant <laughs> we move slowly and we have a long trunk we smell a lot <laughs> and when we smell a lot we know where to move and that is why we have grown and we have been able to avoid this major crisis therefore it is not something that i should only because some magazine writes that i am not moving fast enough i should follow them i think india's uh, economic policy so far as opening is concerned has been well received has been beneficial to us at the same time i think we are traditionally cautious people we have preserved that caution also you, you, you know we have had this policy of look east uh, which even uh, jasjit referred to our relationship with the east how do you see that relationship being affected with this recent crisis in the east asian economies well i would say that uh, it is not easy to really totally avoid an international crisis particularly when the era of globalization the economies are do interacting with each other and therefore if some bit something happens somewhere shocks do extend only thing is comparatively whether we will to absorb a lot of shock or not we have been able to do i think mm. absorb a lot of shock at the same time the crisis is not over as yet mm. so we cannot sit back with confidence and say that everything is over and we have got over it well our rupee has slipped mm. to some extent but we have taken quick action to try to see to it that Mr. Professor, I, I was wondering uh, one more question in this area is whether you see the need to change our internal system of policy formulation in the context of what's happening in the world and our increased exposure to the world in terms of improving the synergy between the foreign ministry the commerce ministry the economic ministries yes i do i do need to feel the need of change for two reasons one our governmental machinery and the bureaucratic level is much too bulky and much too inadjustable does not respond quickly the file system by itself is outmoded we have not taken to computer as yet in our administration but those things do need need a change we also need for instance somebody said that a decision in the government of india is taken at nine levels somebody said no it is seven <laughs> why can't i come to two or three hmm. so those things are needed. internal reforms are very much called for and you know unless we do this particularly economic, not an economic ministry every ministry because every ministry becomes ultimately economic the main point is unless we are able to really shed off weight in the sense of a flabbiness of administration we will not be able to cope with the challenge that we are facing the challenges are very massive but the paperless work i'm say if somebody has to export and get stuck in the customs for days and days in the meantime the market moves ups and downs i'm say nobody can do it today there may be element of corruption also that can also be taken care of but this attitude of bureaucracy that the, the harassment is first responsibility and therefore it is a favor not to harass yes i am saying therefore the things don't move yeah. and you cannot run a modern economy and a modern nation cannot afford it anymore yes yeah. mr prime minister if i may <coughs> say that as i understand it the foreign policy is all about promoting protecting sustaining uh, the core national interest which when you finally start defining them are either economic or security and in that process when you mentioned earlier uh, the ctbt ep- episode was very clear and i and i see from my the levels in which i interact a renewed respect for india and its and its policies and the recognition that india will rec- will sort of protect its core sensitive interests how do we uh, but at the same time there's a need to find a way ahead while we protect our core interests especially when we're dealing with the united states and at home to ensure that we have this what i would call in insurance for the future available would you like to talk about yes i would if i may add mr prime minister there is a, there is an impression from time to time that the differences between india and america on this issue are getting narrowed some ways are being found around them do you subscribe to that impression you see yes they are being narrowed because it is uh, india's compulsions are being understood yeah. Yeah. if uh, i had been bullied on ctbt <laughs> differences would have been widened not narrowed yeah. mm-hmm. the fact that i refused to be bullied mm-hmm. that basically made them understand that india's security interests india has a capacity to take care of and i think we have shown that now question and i made it very clear and i see it now nuclear option for instance often talked about and i have told my nation and i want to repeat it again i am not going to be bullied by anybody 
to close my options. We mm. respond, the options must respond to realities. Mm. Till the world is nuclear, India has to be cautious. Mm. That is why we have refused to, uh, to mortgage our options. Mr. Prime Minister, uh, one question which really relates to our bilateral relations with Pakistan at regional level uh, under your uh, guidance lot has been achieved. How do you see the situation now? Do you think we can look forward to the softening of the frontiers in terms of commercial and cultural exchanges between India and Pakistan? And do you think that pa Pakistan will agree to delink Kashmir from the other agenda of Indo-Pak relations? You see, dealing with Pakistan, the policies that we have transformed are very different. One, we have stopped that era of exchange of polemics. I do not get provoked. Even when a very harsh speech is made against India and the United Nations, we refuse to respond. India has gained the print prestige, not lost in prestige. Certainly. We, I remember that when, before I came to office as a foreign minister, the, it was generally estimated in the foreign office that about 70% of our energy is lost in responding to this <laughs> statement and that <laughs> statement. And then every small, big country coming here asking first question, please tell us, is Kashmir ours? <laughs> and then highlighting, no, so and so also saying, I have stopped that. I do not ask any my visiting, uh, visiting friend about Kashmir. Why? Kashmir is a part of India and shall remain so. That is a different thing altogether. So I don't need certificates from anybody. Nor do I hold a referendum on this issue of, the, of international referendums. No, I don't. Number one. Therefore, well, now we are dealing with Pakistan on a different basis of friendship and cooperation. We are cooperating in SARC. And I think ultimate solution of relationship will come via SARC. Internally, unfortunately, Pakistan's democracy is still in the infancy. The, it is taking time to resolve their internal areas of conflict. I look at that with sympathy. Was there I am not cynical about Pakistan, no. Nor antiism helps. But at the same time, I am safeguarding our security. And not, mar not bargaining, nor mortgaging our own essential interests, but I think we are improving relations. We are trying to open up travel, we are trying to open up trade. Last year, Pakistan bought from India 50,000 tons of sugar. It may be reversed this time, because our sugar this time is not uh, adequate uh, in quantity. So we may have to buy from them. Ultimately, this is what builds the relationships. But, but is Pakistan still not uh, adhering to the WTO obligation on granting India the MFN status, the most favoured nation status. How does it matter? <laughs> In reality, I'm saying, let us go, go beyond academics. It is generally estimated that uh, informal trade between India and Pakistan is now being talked of in the terms of 6,000 crores. What is the informal trade? Via Hong Kong, via Dubai Mumbai. and all that, isn't it? I don't lose anything. Whether the ultimate product goes via Hong Kong or travels via Dubai or goes across to Vaga makes no difference to me. Those are the compulsions of eco economy. Ultimately, they will prevail. And that was the spelling of Dhaka summit. Dhaka summit was taking reality into account. You see, I, I, I have high respect for my, for my friend, the Prime Minister of Nawaz, Nawaz Sharif of Pakistan. We are personally very good friends. And I, have, I trust him. I think he is looking at these things in reality in the interest of Pakistan itself. Ultimately in this region, we have to work together. But if you have one mindset on something, that this first and that, son, that second, then you get stuck there. And India, this basically India has succeeded in moving forward with Pakistan if possible, without Pakistan if necessary. Are you and that is why we have carried other neighbors with us. Is, is, is there um, a lessening prospect of having to do without if necessary? Yes, it is lessening. Because I told you, mm. two years ago, the informal trades were 2,000 crores. Mm -hmm. It has tripled. And the number of people who are coming and going has multiplied several times. You see, t television crosses across the border. 
So even if you stop films from coming in, you don't <laughs> stop television from. Isn't these are interesting things? You know, modern times, modern urges. Yes. Then look at interesting thing. In last six months, that I've been prime minister seven months. This was my fourth meeting with Nawaz Sharif. Mm. Although it happened in various countries, mm. but fact that we sit together, the fact that we look forward to meeting to each other, the fact that in advance we fix meetings and we get together. Isn't that a, a essential um, indication itself mm -hmm. as to which way we are trying the countries to go? Well, um, you will all agree this has been a fascinating half hour with you and uh, full confirmation of changing India's role in a changing world and uh, the synergy of the change at both levels. No, I would only try to modify Pran. Huh? India has changed. Yes. Yeah. And as I said yeah. in the past some time, uh, next century is a century of India. And I want to repeat what I have said, that greatness is knocking the door of India. We have only to facilitate opening it. On that happy note, Mr. Prime Minister, thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>